at around three and a half metres or 11 feet across and weighing up to 40 kilograms or 88 pounds, the antlers of male Megaloceros giganteus were the biggest of any deer ever. But did these guys actually lock horns in titanic thunderous battles or were they just too big for any practical purpose other than showing off to the girls? It's a question that has intrigued researchers for centuries. And if you want the answer, keep watching. Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe. I'm a real paleontologist, and you're watching Real Paleontology. Megaloceros, sometimes called the Irish elk, even though it's not an elk, was around the size of a modern-day moose. But if ever these two enormous deer species went head-to-head, -head, the moose would have been taking a knife to a gunfight. Its antlers were half the size. On the other hand, paleontologists have long questioned whether these ginormous antlers were simply too damn big. Could they really have taken the massive forces that would have been generated if two 600 kilo giants collided and wrestled without breaking? Might they just have been all show, a deer's equivalent to the peacock's tail? This is the question that my then PhD student, Ada Klinkhammer, myself and some other colleagues set out to answer in 2019. And we did it using some pretty sophisticated computer simulation, a method known as finite element analysis, or FEA. FEA is a computer-based approach developed mid-last century for the aerospace industry to crash test man-made structures without having to actually build them and smash them up. Obviously, if you have a couple of competing rocket designs, it's a whole lot cheaper and easier to compare them using computer simulations than to build them and see which one breaks up first. Initially, biological models were just too damn complex, but with today's far more powerful computers, we can run all sorts of cool simulations of skulls and other parts of any animal, provided we can get a CT scan of it. Anyway, just a bit of background on the big deer before we get into it. Megaloceros giganteus was an Ice Age species that lived up to around 7,700 years ago. It had an extensive range, spanning from Ireland across to what is now eastern Russia. It definitely coexisted with both Neanderthals and modern humans at different times and places, and it certainly had an impact, as its unmistakable image has been replicated in various cave paintings. That's enough background, I think, though. There's loads more on its biology and ecology out there on the interweb, but there's no real treatment out there on the biomechanics of what would happen if these two giants truly went head to head. You'll get that here first. And we published our findings in this paper in 2019. So how did we go about it? Well, first we needed to build three-dimensional computer models of the animal's head, including its antlers. And to do this, it had to be CT scanned. No simple task when you're looking at a skull that's effectively over three metres wide. To do this, Adrian Lister from the UK, a guy who knows a lot about Megaloceros, separately scanned a skull and an antler. Then we had to reassemble it on the computer, so to speak. To give us some context, we needed to also build models of some living deer species. Once we'd built the models, we needed to decide how they were going to interact with each other. Now, when male deer get a big testosterone rush in mating season, it's all on to determine who gets mating privileges. It's pretty much a winner-takes-all game, so there's a lot on the line when these big boys go at it. And it's not just mating privileges, but the risk of broken antlers or even serious injury that's at play. Now, a fight between two male deer can be broken down into two phases, an initial head clash, and then once they've locked horns, there is a lot of pushing and twisting going on. It's not like big horn sheep battles where the two combatants repeatedly smack their heads together. In order to simulate this gargantuan struggle, we needed to figure out precisely how the antlers would have contacted in both the initial clash phase and the push and twist phase. To do this, I 3D printed scaled down models of the skulls and antlers and had heaps of fun banging them into each other and seeing how and where they contacted. I found that there were two main ways in which the antlers of Megaloceros could have interlocked. 
more or less either at the extreme tips of the antlers or at the prongs closer to the midline of the skull. So we ran simulations of both. Next, we had to figure the kind of forces that would have been involved here. Basically, we used the estimated body weights for this. For Megalosaurus, we used the average weight of the moose, which is an animal of very similar height at the shoulders and a very similar build. The moose has an average weight of around 485 kilos and a recorded maximum of 730 kilos. With all this figured, it was time to get cracking, so to speak. With our simulations run on the computer, what did we find? Well, interestingly, as you can see here, if the antlers of the two combatants locked at the extreme tips, in the twisting and especially the pushing simulations, Megalosaurus's antlers were way more stressed than those of any other species. I point out that the hotter the colour here, the greater the stress, with blue indicating little or no stress, and white indicating the higher stresses. However, if the antlers locked at the prongs, or what we call tines, that were closer to the skull, then there wasn't much difference between Megalosaurus and the others, especially in the twisting simulations. So what are we to conclude from all this? And firstly, can I just quickly ask that if you've enjoyed this content, then please like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Anyway, we reckon our findings suggest that male Megalosaurus probably did use their antlers in combat, but in a kind of carefully choreographed, limited kind of way. They would have avoided contact with the outer extremes of these huge, rather unwieldy structures and used only the lower prongs of the antlers that were closer to the midline of the skull. This means that the greater portion of the antlers didn't have any function in combat. So the answer to the question, were these just for show or were they built for combat is, well, yes and yes, a bit of both. Most of it was for show, but at least some of it was built for the fight. Now, earlier I know that I said I was going to focus entirely on the function of the antlers in Megalosaurus, but while researching, I came across a paper published late last year that's not received much coverage, but I think some of you will find it of interest. In 2024, Raymond Cuxart Araz and friends here analysed the number of ribs in specimens of Megalosaurus and 21 living species of deer. They found that in more recent Megalosaurus there was often an extra rib. The only living species of deer in which this frequently happened is the highly endangered and seriously inbred Pierre David deer. Anyway, folks, I'll leave it there. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night, and I'll be back next week with another video.